Hello. Hi, everyone. We will be starting in a couple of minutes, just trying out the sound and the video. Can you send, I can hear you, into the chat, if you can hear us, please? Okay. Hello, Anna. Anna, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hi, everyone. Can okay. you hear me? Okay, again, if you can hear us, please type I can hear you into the chat. Mm -hmm. We can see a couple of hellos from some people. Plus, yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. I think. Okay, so that's good. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're, good. we're good with the town. Okay, good. So, uh, recording. Just starting in a couple of minutes. Um, Okay, so we'll just start the presentation for you so that you can see our slides. Okay. Okay, Anna, can you tell me if you have control over the slides, please? Yes, it, it did tell me that I have that. Yes. Great, excellent. Um, so, Everyone, just, just to give you an idea of what's happening, I am presenting from Kiev, from Great Education Center today, and my lovely colleague Anna Shokaluk is on a business trip in Harkis, where she has just completed a training session. She was giving training to one of our preparation centers, so she will be presenting at this webinar from Kharkiv. Yes, that is true, and I'm actually in the school premises. Um, the school is quite modern and new, and uh, I'm impressed by what they're doing here, and I'm uh, happy that um, that we can still stay connected and have a quick chat about seven habits of a successful teacher today. Um, so I guess we should be starting, yeah? Okay, yep. Um, just making sure that everything is okay on the screen. Right, okay, good. Um, so some people say no sound or no video. Can you please check that you have Flash Player working? All right? Please make sure that you enable it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Let us start officially, all right? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll be starting by introducing ourselves. I'll introduce my lovely colleague, Anna Shokkaluk, um, who I'm happy to be working with now at Great Education Center, though I've known Anna for years and years now, and we've worked on projects together and done some preparation together. And it's always a great pleasure for me, and I'm honored to be presenting this webinar for the second time together with Anna. And I will, um, I will present my um, beautiful colleague, great expert and professional, Katerina Rosenka. I, I am honored to have worked with her uh, in the past, and I still work with her, and hope that we can do even better things in the future. Uh, Katerina is director of teacher training at Great Education Center, also a CELTA and Delta tutor. A conference speaker, materials writer, and she's just a great uh, person to know and to be friends with and to work with. And um, today we're actually repeating our webinar as um, we decided that we need to do it again. Everyone who's um, here with us today, thank you for coming this Friday afternoon. There will be a recording available. We are recording this session. 
uh, and we will send you the recording. Um, actually, you will receive it automatically after the webinar from the platform, but we will also make sure that um, you get it from us when we send you the materials, the certificates, and the video recording as well. Uh, so, we're starting with the seven habits of a successful teacher, and uh, we're going to begin with um, the aims of the session. Okay. Um, Raja, do I have the remote control? I think you do, yeah. Okay, there is a slight delay, I think, because of the internet connection. So if you can all give us a second, we'll get back to the slide we need. Okay, yeah, let's do that. There is a delay. So we, we are back with the screen, with the aims of the session. Probably not just yet. Okay, while we are getting our slides back, um, I'm going to kindly ask you uh, to type in the chat box where you all are coming from, which cities are here with us today. Can you type the name of the city you are from in the chat box? Okay, Katrina Dessa, all right. Mm -hmm. Some people from Odessa. Ross is from Atlanta. Hi, Ross. Thank you for coming. Mm hmm. Vinita, Kiev. Hi, Alina. Alex, the city of Kiev. Nice to see you. Uh, Sumy, Ovruch, Kiev. Great. Nitro. Toronto, Warsaw. Great. Also, Zmerinka, Kiev. Mm hmm. Well, I think this time we have even more participants than we had in our first webinar, um, which is a real pleasure. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, okay, so I think we can safely continue with the webinar now. Um, and while, while we are on the slide, um, we just wanted to give you a very, very brief idea of why we decided to talk about this topic today. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this fantastic book by Stephen Covey. And both Anna and I have read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, although we cannot remember um, a single thing um, from what we read there, or we can't remember a lot of things from there. We felt that if highly effective people have their habits, which are worth a book, probably successful teachers have their habits, which are worth a webinar. So we wanted to summarize what we think the habits are and how we can develop them. And also to raise your awareness of the habits you have and actually just tell you that you are successful teachers and you have your own habits which you should reinforce. So, I'm going to move on to the slide with the A, which Anna will introduce to us. Here we are. Yes, so the aims of the session that we uh, decided to set for ourselves and for you um, are the following. We're going to think about our own teaching habits and routines. We're going to just try and reflect on what we as teachers do 
on a daily basis, perhaps or subconsciously or consciously at times. Uh, we're going to familiarize, we're going to show you the seven habits that we have outlined as the key uh, ones. Of course, there are many more, um, as you know, habits are numerous, and every teacher who's been there for quite some time develops certain things uh, that we uh, uh, do on a daily basis. And we're going to discover new ways of improving the teaching, Terry, uh, the opportunities for you to learn. Okay, uh, and um, yeah, uh, the statement that I would like to share with you here is that good teachers have their own rituals and routines. And um, I would like to ask you to think about your own rituals and routines uh, that you have in your daily basis teaching practice. Uh, and I would like you, okay, um, just a second, I'm just reading a chat. Um, yeah, the echo. Um, there is a question about the echo. Um, We'll try to switch the sound settings on for now. And the online broadcast, that's what we're doing now. That's our live webinar. There is a question about the online broadcast. We're doing the webinar, that's the broadcast. Um, some people are saying there are problems with sound. OK, while Anna is talking about this, I will just type a message into the chat to respond to the people who cannot see or hear us. So I'll be quiet for a couple of seconds, for a minute. Okay, okay. So I'm going to come back to the habits the teachers have and their own routine. Uh, can you please type in the chat box uh, what habits do you have or perhaps what routines do you have when you teach your students? Um, before we do that, uh, I'm going to show you the slide with a picture uh, of my group. Okay, can you show the next slide, please? So that is the lesson of uh, my communication skills group of the B2 level. And the habit that I have uh, is um, asking students how they are doing at the beginning mm -hmm. of the lesson. Uh, when we come to the classroom, when they come to the classroom, I ask them how they are, what they are up to. And this is kind of our habit in routine to start chatting even before the beginning of the lesson. And therefore, um, this is my ritual. I like to find out the general atmosphere and the general. Um, mood of the people that are there. This helps to build rapport and also to, um, to see what the students are feeling and to see how to work with people um, on a daily basis in my teaching practice. Okay. Okay. Now, we're going... If... Um, if we look at your habits and the routines, let's now type in the chat box whether you have your own routines and habits in your current teaching practice. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick up here and I'm going to read out some answers that we have. Uh, building rapport, playing board games, okay. Nothing special, some small talk, 
Victory da dances at the end. Wow. Okay. Warming up. Okay. Good sound, no echo. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Yes. Um, hmm? You usually start your lesson with morning routine. You wish good luck to everyone and say compliments. Cool. Okay. Warming up. Mm hmm. Warming up. Mm hmm. Everything all right. Okay. You do routines. Alina says that she does routines, dictations of different types. Okay. Uh -huh. Ksenia, you're saying that it's a cool pick and the sound is better now. Okay. Thank you, Alina. Thank you. Yeah, Kate um, is going to be back in a minute as um, she's uh, switching on, uh, the sound uh, to make it a bit better. The ball game, the morning hellos. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have a small talk with the student. Okay. Vocabulary. ball games okay some basic chatting sometimes you ask five things okay communicating with students in english and telegram groups yeah the groups and the chats uh we're going to talk about them a bit but um uh, we're going to talk about that a bit for sure now okay thank you for your habits now can you um type in the chat can you type the bad habits that teachers might have? We are talking about our own habits, which are, of course, good, but do teachers have some bad habits? Uh, I do. I know I do. I have, a, I could say, a parasite word. And uh, if my student is um, still listening to me, he will say that it's true. I say, yeah, all the time. When I give instructions, I like to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's, that's kind of a parasite word. Do you have any bad habits or maybe do you know any bad habits that your colleagues have? TTT, for sure. That could be a bad habit too much. Too much teacher talking. It's like TTTT. Yes. Over explaining everything. Could be. Okay, Kata, thank you. Focusing on grammar for too long. Yeah, that's a habit or, yeah. Um, from this list, I can see quite a lot of quite a lot of things which we say sh are things we should not be doing um, on CELTA. Um, and yes, some of them are bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them can be um, okay if used um, in a limited amount. For example, somebody just said using Russian. Uh, but let's not go into the detail and let's just move on with the webinar. I think we're now more or less set. Um, the sound should be okay. Um, I hope we've managed to fix it. So shall we move on? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Good. We're going to move mm -hmm. on to habit number one. Okay. So here we are with our habit number one, which is reflecting on your own lessons. Um, and when Anna and I sat down and started planning the webinar, we wanted to just jot down the ideas in general. And the first thing which came to our mind was actually thinking about the lesson itself and asking yourself questions such as what went well, what could have worked out better, what should be improved, and if we could teach this lesson again, what we would do differently, uh, maybe nothing, maybe everything. And those of you who have taken CELTA with us will recognize those questions because they come from the formal self-evaluation which you have to fill in every single time you teach a lesson. Um, so this is one of the forms that self-reflection can take 
However, it doesn't always have to be formal. Occasionally, you can just make short notes on your phone, and if you can keep, can keep adding to those notes, after every lesson, you will see how you develop um, and, and how you progress with the things which worked or which didn't work. My personal favorite is post-it notes. I quite like those little pieces of paper. And if, I, if I've done a teach training session, for example, and I think, okay, this worked well, my instructions should, should have been better, I could have regrouped more, I jot down those little ideas and post-it notes and keep them on my desk so that next time I teach a session, I have this in my mind. And then if I've worked on it, if I've improved it, I can throw this note away. And we also thought of study buddies um, in the context of Having a friend, we all have a teacher's room where we all go back to after we teach our lessons and we say, hey, yeah, that was a nice lesson, but the drilling, that was a little bit too much. Do you, do you normally do a lot of drilling? And over a cup of coffee, you discuss your ideas with your friend. And that's your study buddy. And when we are thinking about it, we both think that post-lesson reflection should be and is something like a hygiene routine, um, meaning that we should be doing it consistently all the time and it should have its rules. For example, our dentists tell us that we should be brushing our teeth in a special direction, um, should be uh, in, in circular ways, not up and down and stuff like that, because otherwise it has some bad impact on it. Same with post session reflection. If it's always the same for questions, if you keep doing it all the time, that will help you develop much better awareness. On the next slide, um, over here, you can see a sample of the self-evaluation which we give to our CELTA candidates. And they have to fill it in after every single lesson. On the right, you can see uh, an example, and that's a really, really rigorous um, self-evaluation, that's a very good candidate. We do not, of course, expect anything like this, but that's just an example of what we could all aim at. All right? So I'm handing over to Anna for the second um, habit of successful teachers. Anna, over to you. Yes, habit number two um, links back to my question to you previously, establishing lesson routines and classroom rules. Um, maybe it's maybe something that I say now seems a bit obvious, but still, uh, we're going to look at why classroom routines, classroom rules and lesson routines are a useful um, thing that might help us in classroom management and not only, uh, and also what, how, what impact or what effect it has on the students. Um, some teachers say that having a lesson routine can be boring and makes lessons predictable and your students might not um, be motivated either to come or they will say, oh, it's again the same thing. But it all depends on what we do with them repeatedly. There are various types of activities we can use, various purposes. Some of them are um, related to language. Some of them are related to classroom instruction. Some of them, classroom management, some of them are related to you uh, as a teacher um, just um, informing or instructing the students or helping the students become better learners. Um, why this is important, the lesson routines and uh, rituals as well as, um, as well as repeated activities are oftentimes important because it creates a sense of security for your learners. Uh, especially if we talk about kids or teenagers, they get used to similar things and they um, know uh, what to expect, which builds confidence and which creates that safe learning environment that is so important uh, in terms of um, in terms of motivating them to study uh, the language. Um, and of course, uh, we can go to the next slide. And of course, when it comes to classroom management and classroom rules, teaching school children, not only school children, adults sometimes as well, uh, it is important to establish certain rules. And that's a, a habit that I believe teachers um, should have 
uh, in, when they start working with the group, when they want to have things their own way. Some examples here are um, classroom contracts, the contract that you as a teacher can sign with your students and agree on the rules you're going to have. I'm going to show you an example of a class contract I did with my students um, in the summer. Uh, some examples of uh, habits uh, or routines that you can have with your students. Entry exit tickets. These are the papers that you can give out before the lesson at an entry ticket when you want your students to enter the classroom by um, doing some tasks. For example, I had my teenage group B2 level. Um, they, we were just revising a regular verb, so their entry ticket was a card with three regular verbs that they had to say in order to enter the classroom. The same thing could be done with exit tickets. Exit tickets are the ones that let them go out of the classroom and that's uh, also a sign of their learning, evidence, as we say, of their learning and what they've done. Homework check, this is um, the way to do it um, every lesson or not every lesson, but from time to time in the same way. For example, you give out answers, they check in pairs, and then you, get, you give feedback. Or uh, we often um, put answers on Google Classroom for our students to check, and then we ask them if they have any questions. Um, vocabulary revision activities, a lot of them can be done in different ways, card games, lists, um, programs that we're going to talk about a bit later, songs, some teachers like, uh, um, like singing songs at the end of the lesson. I knew a couple of teachers that made their um, adult group students, uh, adult students in the group sing songs at the end of every lesson and they loved it. Um, whatever makes um, everyone happy and um, brings and contributes to the learning could be uh, regarded as a habit and a routine that is effective and productive and helps the teacher. Um, let's move on to the next habit and uh, let's move on to the class contract. I'm sorry. That's the example of the class contract I, I um, did with my students. B2 communication skills group, the same group I showed the photo of. Uh, what we did here, uh, we signed a contract between the students and me. I put my own ideas of what I want my students to do and then what I as a teacher will do. I, let, I left some blank spaces there, uh, letting them put in their ideas uh, on what they want. Uh, to do themselves, what they promise they will do, and what they want me as a teacher to do. And then we signed it, and um, we, we kind of, I guess we kind of then followed the rules, and it helped us build um, some um, understanding in terms of what everyone expects from each other. Uh, so if we, um, let's look at, yeah, let's look at habit number two. And that's our third habit of successful teachers. Um, and we thought that noticing useful language is one of the things that successful teachers do um, quite a lot in their lessons and in real life. Um, and this includes uh, language from anywhere in the world. If you catch yourself thinking, oh, that's a great phrase to teach, or oh, I should give my students this phrase, or, well, this is what I'm going to do in my lesson. That's what you are already doing. Um, this can be phrases from TV series and films. Our all-time favorite TV series, Friends. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have picked up quite a lot of language from there. Songs, which can be quite colloquial and include the language which can be quite difficult. Um, pronunciation might differ from natural English just because of the rhyme. But um, they include a lot of things which we should um, try and use in our everyday English. Websites. I'm sure we all read online magazines, interesting articles, and there are lots of things we want to um, use from there. I'm going to show you an example in a few seconds. Conversations from friends, um, including native speakers and non-native speakers. There is a theory in psychology that if we meet a person who we like, 
we start speaking like them, we pick up their gestures, we pick up their phrases, that's a process which happens without us understanding that this is happening. That's a subconscious thing. But the beauty of it is that we get quite a lot of beautiful language from various people. And let's not forget about texts in Corsics. In a lot of cases, we teach receptive skills lessons, um, can be reading or listening, and we do receptive skills development. But what about the language in those texts? There's a lot, a lot we can get out of there. And I'm going to show you another example in a few more minutes. Language is everywhere. I was recently preparing a friend of mine for a CAE exam. And I tried to get some language for her, which I think she should benefit from in speaking and reading. Um, I was reading um, this website, it's Thought Catalog. You can see a um, screenshot on the right. And that's a beautiful text in highly, highly advanced language. I'll just give you a minute to read the text you see below the picture. I saw those lines and I thought, what beautiful phrases. I'm sure that if my friend, if she uses those phrases in her, in her C1 um, advanced speaking, she'll get a higher grade. Um, you know, it, it's very easy to lapse into the state of a bored indifference if a webinar isn't particularly enjoyable for you, which I hope is not what's happening to you. Um, and, you know, lapse into an indifferent sadness if you're not particularly happy with your job, if you're burnt out and stuff like that. That's very natural English, but that's highly advanced English. Um, and what we did with this language and what we are doing, still doing with this language, is we use Quizlet. Um, so we're all familiar with using Quizlet for words and definitions and you flip the cards and you have to remember, try and recall the word. Um, we went a little bit further and we used Quizlet with sentences where I take out the phrases I want my friends to retain and use later. Um, you'll see an example on the left. Have you ever thought that mm -mm -mm -mm, while talking to a person for the first time? And you know, maybe without the context, it's difficult for you to guess what goes there. This comes from a C1 and 1 advanced um, practice uh, text for reading section, and the phrase there is, have you ever thought that appearances can be deceptive while talking to a person for the first time? Um, and so um, we, we use this question in Quizlet, so she revises the language. And sometimes if it's a question, she can just spend a couple of seconds thinking how she would respond to that um, in her real exam. And, and on the right, you can see um, the list of the sentences with the questions we use. And they all come from various places. It's just important to have this once again as a hygiene routine and keep doing this um, all the time. And from here, we'll move on to the fourth habit, and I'll hand over, I'll be handing over to Anna again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kaza. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about habit number four, which is about revision and consolidating things. Um, before I uh, tell um, about the habit that we decided to include in our top seven, can you um, look at the question I have? in the slide for you. Um, how often do you revise the language you taught? Can you type in a chat box, how often do you revise the language you taught? Um, once a month, once a week, every lesson, every unit, every once a year, maybe before the past only? Can you just give us uh, some examples of how you do that as a teacher? Irina says it frequently as we can. Kenya, yeah. every lesson. Thank you. Olha, every lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay, depends on the group. Sure, it does. Always, every lesson, very often. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lutmila. Titana, every lesson, great. Okay, well, 
the majority of us in the chat uh, are saying that we do it we do it as often as possible every lesson we like to do it every lesson uh, however um, yes often and other answers are coming as well however with the material revision if we talk about revising grammar or vocabulary there is a kind of a snowball effect that you might have you do revise uh, um, the material you taught previously less, uh, from lesson to lesson on a daily basis however there is a point where you come often uh, times and you see that there is so much material um, that it's just piling up and you do need we do need to organize it in a certain way in a certain uh, structure uh, so that uh, we have the consolidation that can help our us and the students revise either before the test but of course the test is not the aim or um, put uh, transfer the knowledge from uh, their working memory into their long-term memory. Some, some tools that are very helpful in our uh, practice and uh, teaching practice and uh, that could be useful to revise things. Quizlet, Kate showed some great examples of how else Quizlet can be used, not just when we do words and definitions, but also gap fill activities, tests, games. Quizlet also gives you the opportunity to download the PDF list of the words that you um, that you include and to print them out in the different way flashcards or uh, lists or half a list uh, there is a great variety there uh, vocabulary box yeah that's a that's a kind of a physical thing that you can have in your classroom um, physically a box um, that can um, just be filled in with vocabulary you learn every lesson, putting the vocabulary on the cards and then putting them in the box. And then when your students come back to the class, they can, you can either use this box for various revision activities or they can just sit there and revise and take out words and revise and do the guess the word game definitions and so on and so forth um quizzes various kinds of quizzes and i see all in the chat is saying jeopardy could be could be games and quizzes for example jeopardy um handmade by teachers downloaded by teachers the main thing here is that uh, quizzes help uh, revise several things at once basically that's an interactive and fun way to do it kahoot a good example of um, making revision in, uh, fun and interactive um, revision cycles. We call this um, system of revision when you have a revision cycle every, say, fourth lesson or every tenth lesson every, at the end of every unit. So uh, a cycle includes a set of, of things or activities you do repeatedly from time to time and your students are aware of that. Um, yeah, so revision and recycling helps memorize language and, uh, uh, as I already said, it moves the language into the long-term memory. Um, doesn't matter the form, the, the, the main message here is that uh, it is important, it's a good habit that we should develop with, uh, with ourselves and our students. Giving the, the um, floor to Kate, if I can say that, giving the floor <laughs> in the <laughs> webinar. <laughs> But we're moving on to habit number five. Okay, Katerina, yes, I'll try to speak a bit louder, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And our habit number five is building knowledge um, outside ELT. Um, and both Anna and I thought that this is something um, teachers do naturally as part of their job. Um, and a lot of us will say that we're not responsible for building this kind of knowledge for only teaching English. Uh, but it is happening in our classroom, and um, why should we be neglecting uh, this habit if it's already there? Um, and the question is, can we teach the language without the content? Um, and we thought, no. Um, there's always something, there's always context, and there's always content into what we are doing. Um, and when you think about your classes, um, we choose the topics which should be suitable um, to our learners. Um, for example, we won't be talking about jobs to our very young, le um, very young learners, and we won't be talking about dragons 
to adults, or although we might sometimes as part of talking about books. Um, and we thought that all teachers know that topics which encourage their learners to speak and to participate in the class. Um, and I'll give you an example from one of my recent um, experiences. Um, I really, really like Malcolm Gladwell and, and his book Blink. And a question to you now, if you know this book or if you have heard of Malcolm Gladwell, can you please type yes into the chat? Okay, some people are saying no. So this bit will be um, a little bit of building knowledge outside ELT and outside methodology because this is a really fantastic book and if you ever come across Malcolm Gladwell and can read one of his books, that's what I would recommend. So um, I was recently working on a CELTA course where we were using face-to-face -face upper intermediate and this was a reading lesson, um, and one of my trainees had to do that. Um, and I thought, oh, what a fantastic thing uh, that the unit talking about that book. And luckily, my trainee had read this book as well, so we all got really inspired, and we brought the real book into class, and we showed it to the students, and we had a really fantastic conversation about it. So what happened later is our students wanted to borrow this book and they read it and they later shared their impressions and we kind of brought a little bit of something nice outside English into their um, real life, which happened in an English language classroom. Um, and when we think about course books and when we think about the content of what we are doing, there's a lot of that. Um, facts about different countries, um, something about languages, where they are spoken, not spoken, famous and interesting places, famous and interesting people, something you hadn't known, new artists, books, films and festivals. I still remember, I don't remember the course book, but I still remember a text about La Tomatina Festival, um, which is something related to tomatoes. Travel destinations, which is always a source of inspiration and architecture. Um, I still remember ages ago I was working with language leader upper intermediate and the unit in architecture and engineering, I think it was unit 8 or 10 or something like this, where I read about this fantastic building which you can see um, in the picture on the right, that's um, the waterfall, um, the, I can't remember the name actually, uh, the falling water building I think by Frank, Frank uh, Lloyd Wright. Um, and I got inspired and I read a little bit about that and that broadens our horizons. Our horizons as teachers and the students' horizons as well. Um, and from here on, I'm going to give the floor to Anna who will talk about the sixth habit. Okay, um, so habit number six, uh, we are talking about positive feedback. Providing feedback generally is important, we all agree on that, uh, but I would like us all to focus on providing positive feedback. And uh, when we say the word feedback, usually we have some kind of an association with uh, feedback on mistakes, we also know that there can be feedback on content, on what your students have done. Um, my question to you, and I will ask you to um, type in the chat box, how often do you give feedback on mistakes? How often do you give your students feedback on what they've said um, and what mistakes they've made? Okay, Alyssa says, I try every lesson. Great. Mm -hmm. Maria, you learned more about feedback during CELTA. Sure, yes, that is one of the very important parts uh, on the CELTA course. Kate will be able to tell you more about that uh, as well. As often as possible, mm-hmm, okay. Almost every lesson, mm-hmm. Okay, when the speech is controlled. That's an interesting thought, okay. Every lesson, yeah. 
Okay, every four lessons. Well, there are different ways uh, of how we can give feedback on mistakes. But uh, what, we, what I'm trying to say here is that feedback on mistakes doesn't necessarily have to focus only around the mistakes. There are so many other things that you can uh, provide uh, your, your support on. And when I say positive feedback, I mean that oftentimes when we chase the learner's mistakes, we forget to appreciate the good things they've done and to show them what they've done correctly and to include positive examples into our um, language feedback. Uh, praising sometimes uh, is as necessary to the student as the feedback on mistakes because they uh, don't notice mistakes as, and also they sometimes don't notice the good things they have said. So what I feel imp is important here is to show the students the good language they have used, uh, to work on the target language they have used, and to include that into our feedback, whether we're doing it on the board, on paper, whether we're checking written work or um, uh, giving feedback on the speaking task. Um, the um, approach here that we are uh, trying to promote is that feedback should be constructive, feedback should be effective, and of course, uh, not just focusing on the negative things. Um, the sandwich feedback, as we know, the sandwich feedback not only from teaching English but from other spheres as well. The sandwich is positive, things to improve, and positive again. Kind of a good, a good way to give feedback to your students on, say, some creative tasks, uh, projects, written work, and so on, the language as well. So, um, focusing on feedback, not only mistakes, but positive things and improve things that are improving as well, is our key message here. Um, handing over to Kate, and we're going to look at habit number seven. Uh, and we have the top seven list today. Okay, so here I am with the seventh habit of very successful teachers, um, which was actually Anna's idea, um, and she has graciously agreed to let me talk about this one. Um, and this is setting clear aims, uh, whether that's um, aims for an activity, aims for a course, aims for one lesson, aims for a series of lessons, um, whatever that is. And so the question is, do you tell your students the aims of the course and do you tell your students the aims of your lessons? And do you set aims that are smart? Can you please type the number and yes or no into the chat? I'll just wait for a minute uh, for your answers. Okay, people are saying yes, some people are saying no, good, of course, often, mm -hmm. Okay, some people are saying yes to smart aims, that's very nice and we're going to look at that um, in a minute. And so, <clears throat> when Anna and I were speaking about setting clear aims, um, we thought, well, this is what we're doing in um, our webinar. And if you remember, at the beginning, Anna gave you three aims for this session today. And we thought, wow, okay, so that's a very natural example. And that's what we should be doing, again, as often as possible or whenever it's relevant. Um, so when we talk about the SMART aims, um, SMART is an acronym for Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timed. Um, and specific being we are going to learn, um, let's say, second conditional for hypothetical situations um, in the context of talking about whatever, not just we're going to learn grammar in this lesson. Measurable, uh, meaning how much of that you want to teach? Do you want to teach positive, negative, and question forms? Do you want to teach all possible uses for second conditional, or just restrict that to one user, one context? 
Achievable means are you going to be able to achieve it? Ideally, yes, at some point you will be able to learn the second conditional. There's a little bit of addition here that aims being realistic. How realistic is it to teach all of second conditional to pre intermediate learners in one lesson? I would say no, that's impossible. So aims have to be realistic for us teachers to feel satisfaction from what we are doing and for the students to also feel satisfaction from what they're learning. Otherwise, they'll just think, well, I'm, I'm useless as a student. I haven't learned the second conditional in this lesson, so I can't um, study English. Um, so that's why it's our responsibility to do that. And of course, time. We have to give ourselves a time frame within which we want to achieve this aim. And again, the time frame has to be measurable and has to be realistic. Um, aims have to be clear. Um, when they are not, uh, we will see that our learners will say, teacher, teacher, why are we doing this activity? Which means that they're not sure and we probably have to explain. Um, our learners are really smart in terms of um, this seventh habit. And they will help us. They will tell us when they want to know things like that. And so if we look back at the aims for our webinar, and if we think about them being smart, yeah, are they specific? Reflecting on own teaching habits, which is what you did with Anna while I was trying to fix the sound and the video. Apologies for that. Yeah. Are they measurable? Can you? reflect on your own teaching habits. Yes, you outlined TTT, you outlined checking instructions, you outlined giving and checking homework and things like that, right? Uh, A stands for achievable. Is this achievable? Well, obviously, yes, because we've done those things. And, for example, discovering new ways of improving their teaching career, that will come a little bit later. Familiarizing yourself with the seven key habits, Hopefully, yes, we've gone through all of them. Smart R, being realistic. Was it realistic to cover all that? Well, we still have nine minutes. So, yeah, we think that that was um, a realistic outline for the webinar. Um, and time. Time, 60 minutes, that's what we got. Um, realist, being realistic and the aims being timed are very, very closely interrelated um, because timing is what makes your aim realistic. Mm -hmm. So here we are giving you some new ways of uh, professional development and discovering new ideas for professional development. As you might have already heard, we are going to be hosting a conference for the teachers of English, which will be happening in Kiev on the 26th of October this year. Uh, and that's at Nivki Hall. If you haven't registered yet, hurry up to do so, because we have a special early bird fee, which is valid until the 6th of December. Um, there will be lots of fantastic talks. And the headliner of our conference is um, Adrian Underhill, who is the author of the pronunciation chart and is the world famous pronunciation guru. We'll provide you with the link to the registration in the email, which you will probably receive um, on Monday or Tuesday. Giving the floor to Anna. Yeah, well, um, uh, I see in the chat that everyone is saying thank you. Um, just not yet, a couple more minutes. We are uh, uh, coming towards the end. We're going to have a question and answer session. I was just uh, going to say that um, GRADE, Education Center, is the one we represent, is actually the Platinum ex Exam Center. And we, um, together with Cambridge Assessment English, we help people prove their skills to the world. Um, if you go to Grade UA, um, you will find a range of exams for every level and every learner uh, there is. Schools exams, general English exams, business English. We have um, um, the center that runs uh, exams almost every week. Um, last year, our um, um, numbers reached um, more than 4,600 candidates. 
So we're proud of that. We're proud to be called Platinum Exam Center. And if you are planning to receive a qualification from Cambridge, um, do um, contact us or visit the site. After this webinar, you will actually be um, able to go to the site uh, as you will be redirected to it automatically. So stay with us until the end. Um, I also wanted to show you the um, next slide. Okay, just we can have that with the um, with the partnership program that we are offering schools, institutions uh, working with students teaching English, uh, universities, private language schools, um, um, state schools private schools, any kinds of educationalist establishments willing to become the official exam preparation center can contact us and uh, we can um, then uh, set you up in the system, in the Cambridge system as an official exam preparation center, provide you with our support bonuses and uh, um, everything we can to help you prepare for exams and then take them with us. We as the exam center make sure that the administering process of uh, the exams itself runs as smoothly as possible. We have a great team of people and um, quite a lot of experience in that. So do let me know if you're interested in a partnership uh, with Great Education Centre and becoming a, an official exam preparation centre for Cambridge exams. Um, we also wanted to show you the um, the training, uh, the teacher training center that Kate runs and the opportunities you can get um, if you're working with them. Yes, Kate, I'm going to hand over to you on that or? Okay. I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to say a few words. Yes. Um, yes. The teacher training center offers various qualifications, CELTA and DELTA, um, uh, which are Cambridge qualifications for teachers, uh, webinars. There are two of them coming up, actually. Um, the Zeneo preparation um, is going to be conducted by Lydia Simak on October 11th. And um, Andrea is going to talk about, on the 4th of October, uh, she's going to talk about, uh, can, can you remind me? She's going to talk about using video in class and learner-generated video, actually. Uh, and Andrea is a, a lovely social trainer from Brazil, but she's currently based in Barcelona. And she worked with us uh, in July and August. So if you've taken CELTA in this period of time, you will know Andrea. Um, and she runs, um, actually with a group of friend, uh, friends, um, she runs a little teach training um, initiative where they do webinars on, on the stuff they try out. And she's going to share her experiences and, and tell us how we can help our learners generate video and how we can use that um, in class um, to make our lessons more effective and more interesting and engaging. Um, we also have a Facebook page, um, which um, Anna, would you like to say a couple of words about it? Yeah, I'll just say that uh, we regularly post all the updates and very interesting things related to teaching and learning English. We have a great community there. Um, all the updates are there. Uh, stay with us. If you liked this webinar, you can like our Facebook page and stay in touch as well. Uh, we're going to finish with showing our contact details uh, in case you're interested in um, um, teacher training, um, exams, partnership programs, preparation, um, and anything related to teacher development. Um, please contact us. We will be happy to, to talk to you. Uh, to meet you in person, perhaps. Uh, we do have a couple of minutes for uh, questions, I guess, yes? So right now would be the time for your questions, if you have any. I'll just say again that I said it in the beginning, I'll repeat it again, that you will receive a certificate, um, the, the presentation slides, and the recording. Um, and um, so please wait for the email from us. Um, starting from Monday, uh, today is Friday. Congratulations, everyone, by the way, it's Friday. Uh, and hopefully this webinar was useful. I see lots of people saying thank you, and um, we're, we're, we're great that it all worked out. And, you know, we were kind of uh, worried about us as, uh, connecting from different parts of Ukraine. Um, hopefully, 
you um, had fun and you had some good uh, things to think about and to, to uh, see and to, find, to, to, to talk to us about. There is a question. There is a question from Oksana. The question is, are there any CKT workshops in November? Um, at this stage, we are planning CKT workshops. We are going to run them. And if you are subscribed to our emails, you will definitely receive a notification that we are starting a series of CKT workshops. If you're not subscribed to it, go to our website, grades.ua, and leave your email there. You will start receiving lots of useful, useful stuff we send out every Wednesday and all the information. Um, and yeah, once again, thanks everyone for joining um, us this Friday and thank you very much for your patience. Um, and thank you, Anna, for finding the time to connect to this webinar from being away from Harkiv, um, and especially after running a live workshop. Uh, you are a real workaholic and a real star. Thanks very much. Thank you, Kate. Um, you know, I can just say that um, I have good um, people to look at and to learn from, so I guess um, that's the team and the spirit that we all have, and we enjoy what we're doing. Uh, happy that it all worked out. Sorry, Kate, I couldn't be there physically with you, but yeah. I guess it's, it's good that we managed to find this way. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, I think there yeah. was one question, though, uh, that we um, might... I think there was a question about um, what's my next step? right? Yeah. If I have some teaching experience and some excellent results from my students, what step should be next? I do not have any qualifications yet. Well, I guess part of the answer is there in the question. If you don't have any qualifications, but you think you want to get a qualification, um, do check with our website or do send us an email, probably send us your CV and we'll be able to advise what would work for you, probably CKT, probably CELTA, probably DELTA, probably just some of our workshops. If you're specializing in IELTS, then you will want to attend our IELTS workshops with um, Andre Tigaris, who's our IELTS specialist. Um, maybe something else. Um, and again, we're not limited to this webinar. If you do have some questions, you have our contact details, so just send us an email, drop us a line, and we'll be very happy to help if we can. I think we'll be finishing there. And thank you very much, everyone, for your participation. Thank you very much for all your thanks. I'll stop the webinar. Um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a lovely weekend. And Anna, have a safe trip back home. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Have a great weekend. Um, we'll, see, we'll see each other tomorrow or Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. And Bye. See you soon. Thank you.